Today's video, we're going to be looking how to take invoices and automatically extract it into Excel like programs so we can automate our data extraction process for our company, saving us time and making us work less. We're going to be using Zapier tables in today's tutorial. We will also be using interfaces in today's tutorial. By the end of the tutorial, you'll be able to get some type of user interface like this, drag an invoice into it and have everything you would want relevant to that invoice automatically extracted, but also we could technically extract that data and place it elsewhere within our business. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So this tutorial can be kind of used in multiple contexts, not just invoices. So any context that you typically use data from something like a PDF, a Word doc, and you need to extract it to an Excel like program, you can use this tutorial. Without further ado though, this is Corbin AI y'all. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. If you want to get updates like this on new videos, stuff of that nature, or just me talking, let's go and jump in. Okay, so I got the test data above me here. This is just going to be a fake invoice. The tutorial here though could use any type of invoice. So I'm going to show you basically it could be any type of style. Don't worry if there's a lot of images on it, whatever it may be, this can still apply here. So we're going to use this invoice, this fake one right here as our test data here. We're going to jump over to interfaces and begin. Let's go ahead and start off by creating our interfa interfaces. And then start from scratch here. And basically you're going to use this internally. Idea here is either if you're a one man company, one woman company, you're going to use this internally and basically go to this page to drag said files you want to extract data from and automate data extraction processes. On top of that, you can share this link above me to anyone in your team. So everyone within your team can start using it and have an idea of the use case of this specific page. But all we need to do is this, we're going to add a form. We're going to create a table based the based off this form. On top of that, let's just make it look nice here. And we're just going to go ahead and title it, uh, you know, invoice automation. Automation. All right, perfect. And then as you see here, we got a couple of stuff we can add to it. So technically, we can add a ton of stuff to this underlying form here. But let's make it as minimalistic as possible for the context that the use case for this is purely just to drag files into it and extract data. So to do so, I'm going to add another field here. And we're going to name this field invoice for our internal table. And then the type is going to be file upload. And then our label is going to be invoice as well. We actually have a max file size here. So let's just go up to 10 MBs, which should be sufficient in most use cases. As you see here, we got email. We're going to go ahead and change that. And let's just do short text. I'm going to say yes. And the purpose of this, we'll just say is client's name. Maybe we just want client's name associated with the, uh, the invoice, but that's it just for internal reference. Client's name, client's name. And then this should be good here. We can go ahead and make sure something's required. So I'm gonna go ahead and save. I'm gonna make this is required. Let's go ahead and make this required as well. And that's it. This is all we need to do to make our page. I'm gonna click that. And then it's gonna bring us to our live page. This page is live, ready to go. It already has a table associated with it. So let's go ahead and jump over to that table. So we can go through the process of renaming this table if we choose to do so. For now though, we have our relevant information. Uh, one thing that it did mess up on though, is it didn't save the fact that I said short text, please say yes here. Let's see, there we go. Okay, now it saved it. So I come back over to a table here, I should reload it and it should be a short text rather than an email field here. There we go, client name invoice. So we can add a ton of stuff here if you choose to do so. Making it as simple as possible though, we're gonna go ahead and start here. So client's name, let's just say, actually I think the name was like James in the invoice. So we'll put James here and client's name is not valid. Wonder why, let's see. Oh, it's because it was uh, under the impression that was an email field. So I'm gonna reload this real quick again. And this should work, James. Perfect. And let's go ahead and upload our pseudo invoice. All we need to do is hit browse files and upload like this. Okay, so we've uploaded our invoice and wheels are probably turning in your head. You're probably, well, there's probably other stuff we could upload in this context and do a bunch of different stuff when it comes to automation. This is true. You can use this as a starting point in a lot of different contexts for a lot of different stuff within your business. But for this context, all we're gonna do is upload an invoice PDF in our client's name. We're gonna submit here, and this should have worked. That's just an error. As you'll see, it'll pop up right here. There we go. And we have our relevant information. So we got our client's name and we got the invoice PDF. What do we do next? We're gonna create an automation associated with our, PD, our invoice column. So we're gonna go ahead and come down here. We're gonna say create zap. So the purpose of this zap is that when a new invoice is updated or that column is updated, it's going to be triggered, which makes sense. Anytime there's a submission, we expect there to be an invoice associated with that submission. Therefore, Zapier's given, given us a head start here. So we're going to go ahead and say updated record in Zapier tables. That's fine. Page. 
That's the name of the actual uh, table itself. As you see here, it's called page. And come back over here, continue, and let's begin here. So we're gonna test this trigger, and then that first uh, fake submission should show up here, as you see it does. But we gotta do a little bit of magic here. So if I would have proceeded with just doing files, files by Zapier, and converted this underlying file, it actually won't convert correctly due to the fact that this file has images and isn't just straight plain text. Therefore, and because of the fact that basically probably all of our files or all of our invoices have a little bit like, you know, aesthetic looking that looks good, we're gonna have to do an alternative strategy here. But it's really simple. All we gotta do is do Google Drive. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna upload this file to Google Drive so we can convert it as well. In order to do so, we're gonna say upload file, make continue here. We're gonna choose our courses account here, make continue here again. And then I'm just gonna choose one of our folders that we just do a lot of automations on. So I'm gonna do this folder here. I'm gonna do test data. Now, if you're having issues with accessing the file, come over to your test, your folder, and ensure that you can share it. And then basically anyone with a link, actually, you don't need that anymore. It actually looks like that got fixed. So. Ignore everything I just said there, but sometimes you do run into issues for other contexts. Sometimes you gotta do anyone with a link. I don't know if that's gonna help anyone. It may help you if you're ever troubleshooting and you're dealing with issues with Google Drive. That being said though, it should be fine how we have it set up now. So coming back over to our automation, we're gonna go ahead and grab the underlying file URL. As you see here, it's just called URL. Let's zoom it again. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and say convert document, we're gonna say true. It's going to take the underlying document and make it into an editable document. Ed editable? Editable. Yeah, I guess that's how you say it. And basically for us, we can go ahead and rename it to whatever we want. So in this context, because of the fact that we have another column here that identified the client's name, we might as well add James from the row one of that column. And we can just say invoice uh, text. Whatever it may be, we're going to continue here. I'm going to test this step. So what this does for us is this is gonna appear a Google Doc. And the reason we do a Google Doc here is it makes the text and everything on this invoice legible for software. Now this looks like, this looks horrible, but it doesn't matter because we're not gonna be the ones reading this. Artificial intelligence is gonna be the one reading this. So we don't really have to care if it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing as the whole purpose of this is to get data extraction. So from here, once we've uploaded it, we can use Zapier's new tool here so we don't require a code block anymore. We can rather use Zapier's tool here called Files by Zapier in order to grab that text from that file. So we're going to do text and file. And then we're going to go ahead and grab the underlying file that we just uh, basically uploaded and converted. But here's what's important. It can't be file exists but, but not shown. As we file text, this is important, y'all. I got a lot of comments in my past videos having errors. This is huge. That text part is basically fundamental. So from here, that we're going to continue. We're going to test this step and we're going to get all the text associated with that underlying invoice. So as you see here, we got that text, boom. But the issue we have with this now is it is just not formatted, it doesn't look good. So this is where artificial intelligence comes into play. In theory, we could use code, but for consistency at scale, we're gonna wanna use artificial intelligence and then use code after. So we're gonna do conversation, we're gonna continue here, continue here, and we're gonna say, based on this invoice, we're going to do semicolon parentheses. We're going to do text and file. Boom. Generate a line by line of the following information. We're going to say following lead or client information. So here's a couple things we got to do. First thing we got to do is we got to identify, and there's a bunch of ways to approach this, but I'm going to approach it like this context. We are, and then I believe from the underlying text, we are under the name Web Cafe AI. Let me check. There we go. Okay. And we're going to say we are Web Cafe AI. Ignore. We are the seller of services. So this is where you're going to give context of information that you do not care about. And you do not want to show up into the Excel. We're about to push this towards. Due to the fact that if we got an invoice for your business, you don't really need that information in the sheet that you're about to push it towards. You only need your client information. So we're gonna say generate line by line for the following client information. This should be sufficient enough for it to understand that basically don't 
give any information about WebCAF AI. She just gave information about James Brown, which is the client in this context. We're going to go ahead and say this. We're going to say name, address. Let's see what else we got here. Email. And then we'll just do one last one here. And we will do amount due. So there's a ton of other stuff you can do here. Whatever it may be, whatever, whatever is typically relevant with your invoices or whatever document that you're extracting data from, this is where you're going to put it. From here, I'm going to go ahead and upper model to GBT4, and we're going to put in a memory key. We're going to try our first go at this. We're going to say invoice try random 32 characters. So in theory, I could do this. It doesn't matter. But just for the sake of making it look clean, we're going to do that. We're going to continue here, and we're going to test this step. So we're looking for an output here that essentially identifies James Brown, his address, his email, and the amount associated with the contract. So let's go ahead and see what we got. All right, here we go. Name, James Brown, address, perfect. Email, perfect. Amount due, perfect. So this is everything we wanted. Okay, really good stuff, y'all. Now, there is a couple ways we can approach this when it comes to uh, text found that we don't like. The first way we can approach this is that we can keep Proctor and ChatGBT in order to ensure that the text found is just going to be James Brown, et cetera, et cetera. The second way is we could use code in theory and do a replace where basically uh, references to these this kind of text is removed. Let's go ahead and first try to proctor and then maybe we don't have to deal with code. So I'm going to do parameter. When you output clients information, just output the details. No, um, how do I say this? No context of the detail. We're going to say, e.g., instead of name, client name, just do client name. That might have been a little bit extensive there. We'll put one here. Refresh the memory key, start it fresh here, continue retest step. That might have thrown it off. I might have gave it too much of a curveball there, but let's see if it's smart enough to handle that kind of inquiry. And it's smart enough to handle that kind of inquiry. <laughs> okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to use a formatter block. So a formatter block is basically their way of making JavaScript really easy for us to understand. So we're going to do text. We're going to continue here. We're going to transform this text. We're going to split it. You might be saying to yourself, why are we splitting text? What does that even mean? What's going on? First thing is this. Basically, when ChatGPT gives outputs, it's all one big data block. Therefore, for me to separate the data, for example, in this context, for me to separate James Brown, the address, the email, I, I can't just grab it. Like It doesn't come out like separate little blocks that are nice for us to look at, right? This is important for when you deal with Excel because the data associated with James Brown and the address want to be put into two separate columns. Therefore, in order to make it simple on us, we're going to go ahead and split the text. And our separator here, and this is basically how Zapier communicates uh, their nomenclature for handling this kind of information. So if you're more interested in that kind of stuff, you can click this link here. It's going to be new line. So every new line, we're going to go ahead and separate these as separate fields, or what I like to say is separate data points. So James Brown will be a separate data point. The address should be a separate data point and proceed. There we go. So we got everything associated how we like it. Item one through five. Let's go ahead and proceed with our final step here, which is going to be the data input for our Excel sheet. Now, that being said, this could be applied to Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, but the example I'm going to show today is going to be tables. Zapier should probably pay me because this is like straight up their alleyway. Like I'm using their ecosystem from front end to back end. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use the Zapier tables just for this, uh, just for the sake of this video. And what I'm going to do here is first off, I need to create a table. So let me create a table real quick. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to create a new table here and we'll do blank table. We're going to call this table invoice data. I'm going to create table here. So if you remember from our little automation there, we had a couple of things. First thing we had here was a email. So we're going to put email here and we'll go ahead and put email there. Perfect. You can even add icons, which is cool. So in theory, I could put email here. So make our table more aesthetically pleasing. Let's save here and we could do that. 
So we got email, and then we got the second one here, which is going to be address. For this one, we're going to do long text. Yeah, we'll do long text. Save here. And then the third one was the user's name. So we'll do short, or just do text here. I guess that's what they call it. And then the last one was amount. We'll come over here, currency, uh, USD, decimals. Now, I'm not too sure. Actually, we'll go with text. Because I'm not too sure if there's a conversion issue because we're going to be uploading text. It's going to have a conversion sign already. There's no maybe point in doing that. So let's do amount, create, and here we go. So we got our four columns. We got email, address, name, amount. Now we can proceed. So we got the table name invoice data. We're going to do an event here, and it should be something as simple as find or create record. Continue here. We're going to choose a table. There's going to be invoice data. And as you see here, it wants me to find, oh, actually, no, create record if record doesn't exist here. All right, so we're going to choose this option. And this is how we proceed here. So we've already formatted the data here. And as you see, if we didn't format the data, it would just be one big blob. We don't want that. So we're going to come back to our formatter here. And we're going to do output one. Sorry, that is going to be the, the email. So that's output four. And then the name is going to be James Brown. The address, as you see, is two separate data blocks, which is an actually an issue. So I can do a comma here and provide the second half of the address list there. And then the amount is just going to be the 750 USD. So stay tuned here as I'm going to show you how to do all of this. Or it's all going to happen live here. So that should be situated here. And then I'm just going to throw in a random thing here. It obviously won't find the email as it's a unique identifier if this record shows here. So actually, let's just confuse it. It'll never find this value. So I'll always create a record. Continue, test step. And we should create a new record here in our invoice data. Boom. There we go. Maybe not as fast, but as you see here, we got test email, we got the address, we got James Brown, and we got 750 USD. Really cool, publish it, and let's watch this live. So here, here's what we're gonna do. It's live, it's published, everything works. Here is our underlying data record for our invoice data. Coming back over to our invoice automation, it should be as simple as this now. And just to prove to you that it works, we're gonna go ahead and proceed. So we'll say client's name again is James. I'm gonna upload the same PDF here. So I'm browse files. Okay, so when I hit submit, everything's gonna incur. We're gonna have it so the original data that we had from where it's just the name and the invoice is gonna pop over. So I'm gonna grab that real quick. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just change the name to Apple so it looks different. But when I hit submit, this is gonna update and this is gonna update. And all I had to do is type in apples, put my invoice and hit submit. So boom, I see it pop here, boom. Let's see it pop here. This may take a couple seconds as it needs to upload a file, convert a file, extract the file, format a file, and pop up right there, y'all. Should be the same exact data record as well due to the fact that it's the exact same invoice that has been associated with this entire automation process. And there you go. So one thing I want to point out though is in the underlying automation process, if you're having issues with the formatter block or ChatGPT outputs where maybe it comes unreliable with the email being pushed into the wrong output field and stuff of this nature, just be more specific in the way you proctor chat GBT. Be very more specific as in, out, like basically line one should be this, line two should be this, do one line on this, like more specific, more proctoring when it comes to chat GBT if you're having issues in that context. But if you're not having issues in that context, then we have successfully just created an automation using Zapier tables, Zapier interfaces, and basically the whole shabam in order to extract data automatically when it comes to PDF. So if you felt like you learned something, make sure to leave a like. It's completely free and helps me here at Corbin AI. If you like this style of video and you want to see more videos like this, check out the playlist at the end here called Zapier and OpenAI approaching all 5,000 apps. Ton of stuff you can learn when it comes to automation and specifically automation of artificial intelligence. But without further ado, y'all, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.